Hey everybody, Mr. Radcliffe once again, and let's disrupt some more assumptions, this time about Judaism. So arguably one of the most important assumptions we can disrupt is that Jewish persecution finished after the Holocaust ended. And while it's not fair to compare today to the Holocaust, it's also not accurate to say that Jewish oppression has ended. Because while Jews make up about 2% of the American population, they represent almost 60% of the victims of hate crimes in America. That's over two hate crimes per day. And it's more than anti-Muslim, anti-Sikh, anti-Christian, and all of the other religions combined. So we still see a strong current of anti-Semitism, even if it's mostly under the surface of what we're all aware of. The second assumption is that Judaism hasn't changed in over 2,000 years. And that's just not the case. One tradition in Jerusalem is to put messages in what is known as the Western Wall. Well, now they have a service where you can send an e-note and they'll print it out and they'll put that message on the Western Wall. Or you have what is known as the kosher cell phone, where it blocks certain things like web browsing and social media, but it still allows you to do other things like banking, check the weather, send text messages. And many Jewish people today, especially in America, follow what is known as Reform Judaism. And that's a belief that Judaism must change and adapt to the needs of the day to survive. They see the Torah as a living, God-inspired document that enables them to confront the timeless, yet timely challenges of everyday lives. So you have Jewish practitioners continuing to evolve and grow what we consider to be Judaism. This third one might be a shock because we consider Judaism to be a monotheistic religion, but all Jews don't necessarily believe in God. In fact, all Jews aren't very religious. You see in 2013, 22% of adult Jews in America identified themselves as a Jew of no religion. In fact, even the religious Jews consider Judaism to be more about ancestry and culture than it is about religion. So the question, what does it mean to be a Jew, is a very complex question with many different answers, even in the same place and the same time. Which leads us to our final assumption, and that's that Jewish people, they don't have one opinion on Israel. And in fact, they have a very diverse set of opinions. And in fact, U.S. Christians are more likely to support America's relationship with Israel than American Jews are. You see, 42% of American Jews say that President Trump favors the Israelis too much. Only 47% says America has the right balance, as opposed to 59% of all Christians and 72% of white evangelical Christians. And less than half of adult American Jews believe that God gave Israel to Jewish people. And that's not just the Jews of no religion. That's also Jews by religion. One final interesting fact here is you even see some of the religious Jews, one in five religious Jews, don't even believe in God. So we see a wide diversity of beliefs by Jews in America. 